So welcome everybody to our panel webinar on the topic, what is creativity? So many of you attending this webinar will already be enrolled in our MSc in Marketing and Creativity for the upcoming January 2023 intake. But also you may be somebody who perhaps is interested in applying for one of our future intakes. Um, and I know we also have a few of our current students watching today as well. So thank you to everybody for joining us and I hope that you enjoy the next hour or so. Um, some of you may have already met with me, but if not, I'll just quickly introduce myself. So my name is Rachel and I am the Recruitment Executive for the MSc in Marketing and Creativity at ESCP Business School. So this programme is one of our specialised masters and is hosted on the London and the Paris campus. So it's been running for around 13 years now and it's a very popular and a very well regarded masters. So the Masters is currently ranked number five in the QS Masters in Marketing and also number three for employability um, as well. So it's well known also for having a very unique curriculum and a very case and project based teaching approach. And this is known by our not by the book teaching methodology, which I'm sure is something we'll touch on a bit um, later on in the discussion. So the idea of this is this approach really is to prepare our students to become strategic and creative marketers um, and really prepare them to enter the industry and grow their careers within the industry as well. So the purpose of this webinar today is to discuss the core of this program, which is creativity, um, as well as a chance for some of you to meet with some of our professors on this master, uh, which is especially useful if you are joining us in January, just to see a few familiar faces um, and get to know some of our faculty as well. So our panel, they will be discussing what creativity means, um, and especially within the context of marketing, and also how this master is really designed to foster creative and analytical thinking from our students. Um, I know it's a question I get asked a lot, um, so I think it's really useful for you to hear from the experts themselves. So at the end of uh, the webinar, we will have time for some questions. So the Q&A function at the bottom, you can put any questions that you have in there. And then at the end, we will have a chance to run through these. So let's begin. So let's start with introducing our wonderful panel who are joining me today. I will let you introduce yourselves um, and your role at ESCP and a little bit about your professional and academic background. So Marie, let's, uh, let's start with you. Thanks so much, Rachel. And I just uh, want to extend a, a warm welcome to all the participants, attendees that are joining us uh, today. I see names from, uh, from all over the world and it's very exciting. We're absolutely delighted to, to be with you uh, today. So my name is Marie Tayard. I'm a professor of marketing at ESCP based on the London campus. Um, and I actually was the founder of the uh, MMK, of the MSc in Marketing and Creativity, uh, as you said, Rachel, about 13 years ago, along with a wonderful uh, team of, of colleagues and, uh, and uh, administrators, including my friend Peter Stevenson Wright, who's on, on the um, seminar also today. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's what I do. I look after our Creativity Marketing Center. I still uh, teach on the program. I teach our Introduction to Creativity Marketing, as well as an elective on, um, on omnichannel strategies. I also teach a creative thinking um, seminar or class, uh, which I'll, I'll talk about a little bit later because it's something that's quite unique uh, to, to the MMK um, and I think is, is a real um, you know, strong point of, of the program. Um, I, uh, in addition to my teaching, I also do research around uh, creativity and marketing. Um, I've written a number of papers around uh, consumer creativity, and I'll talk about that in a little while as well. And in general, always interested in looking at, at how creativity can be leveraged by marketers, both in terms of, of how we build our marketing teams, but also how we um, uh, infuse creativity into everything we do. So enough about me. Uh, maybe I'll uh, turn it over now to, to uh, Professor Chloe Priest. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Rachel. Um, it's great to be here today. Uh, hello to everyone who's watching. I look forward to interacting with you. 
Uh, I'm Chloe Preece. I'm an associate professor of marketing at ESCP on the London campus. Um, and one of, uh, I'm a kind of recent recruit, so I haven't been at ESCP for very long. I started uh, a few months ago, but one of the kind of key reasons I joined ESCP is uh, because of uh, the creativity and marketing uh, center that they have um, and the fact that this master runs. Um, so my research is on arts marketing. So I do a lot of uh, research on the creative industries in London. So it felt like a really natural fit and I'm really excited to be part of it. Um, I teach the creative branding module on the um, uh, masters and also I'll be teaching the consumers and consumer value. So if uh, you're joining, um, I'll be kind of meeting with you uh, relatively soon. Um, and as I say, um, you know, London is a wonderful place uh, to be if you're interested in the arts, if you're interested in creativity at all, because there's so much going on. Uh, so um, it, it's, it's a really kind of exciting, uh, exciting place to be. And I think we really incorporate that uh, in everything we do uh, on campus. And we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, as we go on. Uh, so I'll pass now to uh, Peter, uh, if you can introduce yourself. Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. Really pleased <clears throat> to be here. My name is uh, Peter Stevenson Wright. Uh, I'm an affiliate professor of marketing uh, on the London campus of ESCP. As Marie said, one of the uh, people who helped put the program together at the beginning, and I still teach on the program as well as many others. And uh, on the MMK, uh, I teach one of the kind of foundation courses, the art and science of creativity. I uh, also teach uh, a module on integrated marketing communications and some workshops on um, um, public speaking skills, which is a really, you know, it's important to have an idea, but then you've got to be able to convince others to go with it. And so the ability to communicate it is very, very important. My background is I come actually from the creative industries. So I worked for many years in uh, global advertising agencies in, in various countries and uh, was uh, so very happy to come in and, and uh, at the beginning of this program. And it is indeed one of the characteristics of our school and particularly this program that we believe we need to have very close links with practice uh, and in particular the leading edge of practice in creativity so that we can prepare students perfectly for their future, um, their future careers. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's all that's all I could say, because other things will come up as we go, I think. Yes, definitely. Thank you. So it's great, obviously, to just hear a bit more about your role within um, the MMK at ESCP. So thank you very much. So let's begin with some of our questions. So I think we'll begin with the very title of this webinar. And um, what is creativity? So how would you describe creativity yourself, your own definition and its current role within business? Um, perhaps, you know, you have kind of examples um, or experience from your professional careers that you could um, draw upon as well. Very good. Um, let me, since my colleagues have been uncharacteristically silent, um, <laughs> I think what I, from my point of view, I, I would say, you know, the, we're in a world that is, that is a VUCA world. It's rapidly changing in unpredictable ways and that means you always you're needing to find new solutions uh, to new problems all the time and creativity therefore which is the process of coming up with new solutions to the problems that management the business face is absolutely essential and many businesses which maybe have actually for years relied on sort of doing what they've done before with slight variations are realizing that they need to make much more dramatic changes to their strategies and therefore they need, need to be more innovative and creative and they need to recruit people who are able to kind of get on that train and go with it. Um, and one of the other, one of the aspects we might come back to is this idea that as well as being creative, you need to be analytical so that, that you don't have one side without the other. And so uh, I think the way I view it and I think the way we view it on the course is that we need to uh, give you the right skills to come up with amazing, wild, risky ideas sometimes, but then we need to give you the skills uh, to reduce the risk, to analyze those to the best solutions to the problem. In other words, to truly understand the problem you're trying to solve so you can pick the best solution. Yeah, just following on from that, um, I mean, I think Peter covered it really well, but um, 
creativity is really kind of developing new imaginative ideas, right? And turning them into a reality. So you do really need both sides. You need to be able to think really creatively, but you also need to be able to think practically as to how that'll actually work. But it's definitely, you know, one of the key skills that employers are, are looking for. Uh, my, my background is in film and theater production. Um, so before I entered academia, I was working uh, with all sorts of kind of film crews and theater companies. And obviously, you know, that's that's an industry where creativity is at the core of everything they do. But generally, when people think of creativity uh, in terms of those types of industries, they think, OK, the product. So maybe the screenwriter is creative, maybe the cinematographer in terms of how the film is shot, maybe the interpretation of the actors. But actually, you know, when you're working on the production side, you need creativity every day because it's just everyday problem solving. Because whatever job you're going to do, there's constantly issues that are coming up that ne you need to be really flexible, you need to be really resilient. So you need to be able to think creatively, uh, creatively in terms of finding solutions, finding alternatives. And, you know, the world we're living in is just becoming uh, ever more kind of constantly changing uh, environments. So in order to kind of navigate that, you need to be able to assess new situations quite quickly, and you need to be able to develop strategies in order uh, to survive. So creativity is really at the heart of that. If I can just bounce back on, on both of my colleagues' um, sort of definitions and characterizations of, of uh, creativity. If you look at the, the literature on creativity, which is remarkably um, extensive, but doesn't really give us very, very clear answers on what creativity is and what is actually creative. And we can talk about that in a little while. But one thing that I think is, is really interesting um, is a notion uh, that there's sort of two characteristics of, of creativity creativity in, in the in the literature, which are new and, you know, sort of something that hasn't been done before, and also something that adds value. So there's a notion of relevance in, in, in the definitions that are given of creativity. So it's got to be applied to something. And I think a lot of that um, is, is, you know, very much in line with what Chloe was just talking about in terms of problem solving. And, and for us, creativity is very often about problem solving, finding a new way to solve a problem, adding value to, to, to your life, to the way you do things, to, you know, to, to, to the way your company uh, uh, does things or, 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 you know, the products that they, they put out and so on. So remember those two aspects of this, you know, new and, and adding value, being relevant to a given uh, topic. And then and there's a third characteristics uh, characteristic characteristic sorry that that often comes up in the literature which is um something to do with with aesthetics it's you know some people say something that's creative has to look good or to to be in some way um pleasing either to the eye or to the ear or something and and that obviously is is more within chloe's um area of you know arts and so on but i often you know wonder you know is does does there have to be that element of of you know pleasing to the eye or the ear or the palate or what have you and at the end of the day, what I've actually, you know, realized is that element of, uh, you know, aesthetics or, or creatively, uh, creatively uh, pleasing is actually adding value. So, so you you sort of still boil it down to the two parts: new and adding value relevant to a given domain, to a given problem, or or you know something we're trying to solve. Um, so that's a little bit of an input on 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 what the the literature tells us. Okay, excellent. And then so in more specifically, then in terms of marketing, how would you say creativity is defined in marketing if you were um, working in that industry? And perhaps how do those two areas overlap? Mm -hmm. um, I'll jump in here. Yeah, well, as you know, we, we, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, um, you know, we we um, at, at ESCP, um, you know, when we started the the MMK also, you know, started to develop what something that we call creativity marketing, which is kind of our own brand of, you know, the way we look at marketing. Um, and, and so we have, you know, some ideas there. One of the things, and again, we've alluded to it already, is the fact that 
you know, lots of people think of creativity and marketing as, you know, creative, um, you know, writing for, for advertising, you know, creating, a, you know, creative copy. Well, you know, the way we see it, it goes way, way, way beyond that. Uh, so for instance, when we think about the four P's or the six P's, those of you who've been through the program or who've had another marketing program know exactly what we're talking about and others will, will find out soon. You know, the sort of basic elements of the marketing mix, the product, the price, the place, the people, and so on. Every single one of these elements can be, you know, injected with creativity, can be disrupted in a way to be both new and add value, right? So, for instance, take something as as boring for most people as pricing, right? Most people think pricing, oh, it's all about numbers. You've got to calculate your break even, how boring. But you can really think of pricing in, in a very creative way. And by doing that, you can, you know, really stand out in the market. There's some really good examples, right? Brands that suddenly disrupted their market by uh, uh, you know, having prices that were way higher than anybody had ever expected. Um, you know, coffee, right? When, when you know, uh, 20, well, no, more like 30 years ago, particularly in the US, if you bought coffee, um, you know, a cup of coffee, it cost practically nothing because once you had paid for a cup of coffee, they kept coming to refill it for you. So the cost of that cup of coffee was almost nothing. The price of that cup of coffee was almost nothing. Along came Starbucks and they said, hey, we're going to charge $7 for a cup of coffee. That was very creative. That was the idea of saying, we're going to make uh, pricing a way to stand out and to get customers to stop and think. It's called the stop and think strategy, right? Wow, coffee, $7 for a cup of coffee. I'm going to have to start thinking about this. What does this cup of coffee mean to me? In a way, maybe it takes me back to my last holiday in Italy. There's a lot of um, interesting aspects there in that very creative pricing. So, you know, the point here is every element of the marketing mix can be infused with, with you know, creative creativity. An example, pricing, you can make pricing less boring and you can use it as a way to, you know, get your customers to, to really pay attention uh, to, to what you're offering. Over to you, Chloe. Sorry, I was a little bit long. -winded. No, no problem. No, no, that's great. Um, and really, all I'm going to do is kind of recap that because I think at the heart of marketing is value creation, right? That's your role as a marketer. And in order to kind of uh, add that value, and often, you know, the value is subjective, right? So it's perceived. So in that sense, we think of marketing often as a science, but I would argue it's as much of an art as a science, because what you're doing is you're changing people's perceptions, right? That's what Starbucks did. They made coffee into something that suddenly was perceived as more valuable. So they were willing to pay more for it, or consumers were willing to pay more for it. Um, so creativity is kind of key in terms of helping marketers differentiate whatever it is they're selling. Um, and, and that's really the kind of significance there. And as as uh, Marie said, it's really in everything uh, that you do. Uh, it's not just in terms of gonna, the advertising campaign or, or the PR. Uh, it's in the product itself and it's in uh, all kind of aspects of selling that product or service or experience. Um, and it's uh, about looking at things from a unique perspective. So um, how do you kind of uh, change people's perceptions, which is something that is really hard to do because we tend to have quite fixed perceptions. Um, so creativity is really needed in order uh, to, to kind of make people see the value of what you're trying to sell. And if they don't see it, you're just not going to be able to sell it. If I can maybe pop in a, then another facet, um, you know, if you look at marketing as basically being about identifying and solving uh, consumer jobs to be done, the needs that consumers have, another way of looking at creativity in marketing is saying, well, you have to be very creative about identifying what those consumer needs are. What is the real need under the desire to buy the product? And a lot of marketing advances happen because companies, and, and the Starbucks again is a good example of that, have thought in a fresh way about what is the, what is the problem the consumer is trying to solve. And then that helps them towards the right solution. And you know, certainly in Starbucks, the idea of providing that third space between home and work, understanding that people felt adrift 
while they were commuting in or out and they wanted to have somewhere that was a refuge from work but didn't involve going home. So that was a, a, a fresh creative understanding of the consumer need and from that then the product solution could flow much more naturally. So Marie, you kind of mentioned it before, you know, ESCP with the, the MMK program has really established creative, creativity marketing quite uniquely. So maybe you could discuss a bit more about how you feel the MMK successfully incorporates creativity in class. So how do you teach creativity? Is it something you can teach? And, and why is this course kind of disruptive in terms of its content? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, very, very good point. I mean, we do it in in several ways, and and you know, uh, Peter will will want to talk about his his uh, great course on uh, the art and science of creativity in a few minutes. But um, basically, what we do is we teach you about creativity. Um, we teach you how to practice uh, creativity in specialized modules such as um, Peter's that I just mentioned or my creative thinking module. But we also teach you across the different modules and across all the different projects um, in, you know, throughout the programs to think creatively. Um, and we encourage people to constantly push their, you know, their thinking to challenge themselves, challenge each other uh, to be more and more, you know, creative. Um, I see, in, in, you know, among the list of, of attendees uh, that are with us this afternoon, several of our current students, uh, and I'm sure they, they'd, um, you know, completely um, recognize what it is we do. You, you don't just, you know, answer a question or, you know, come up with a solution for a project. You have that first answer that first solution and then you're taught to constantly you know go further and what if it weren't this way you question um you know how things could look differently from a different perspective how looking at it from the perspective of you know the buyer but also the supplier or you know a, a middle person or the person who's going to use the product or the person who's going to get this, the product secondhand. You know, we talk more and more about, um, you know, so the circular economy and we talk more and more about sustainability. How do you inject creativity into that process, um, into that the, the first product, into the packaging? All these things we ask you to to really consider and to 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 really um, you know push to 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 the extreme sometimes, um, and that's what uh, um, teamwork is great for also because one of the things we do is we help you develop your creativity individually, but also help you learn to work in teams in a creative way. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let my, my colleagues take over in just a second, but just also a little plug here for my, my uh, seminar on creative thinking, where we develop these skills by working with Lego. Um, if you join us um, on the MMK, or those of you who know the MMK already know that I'm a, a big uh, a fan of Lego. Um, both as a brand, it's a great brand, both the way they work, they run their business, but also how Lego bricks enable us to be creative. It's a particularly interesting object that really helps you push your creativity. So that's that's uh, one of the things we do is, is teach you how to develop that creative skill, what I call the creative muscle, by using um, Lego in many other ways. Um, so Peter, maybe you want to talk a little bit about um, art and science. Yes, oh, I'm happy to do that. And I, I think um, you know, Marie talked about, you know, developing your creative muscle and like any muscle, you, you do that through practice. So, uh, as I say, the course is very much about getting uh, the giving the opportunity to be creative. Art and Science of Creativity is a is a kind of starter course. Uh, we normally do it pretty much at the beginning. And uh, I can guarantee at the end of the first day, you'll, you'll, you'll be doing uh, activities which are a lot of fun and the last thing you expected to be doing in joining uh, maybe an academic course, but that's, that's part of it. And I think the art and science of creativity is about explaining uh, in first terms what creativity is about, its usefulness, really expanding on where we started actually today. Um, 
but but then understanding the different steps the creative steps of having lots of ideas but then the need to analyze it the need to test your hypotheses uh, and developing your ability in teams to actually sell your ideas on because th these are these are the crucial things really is is how how creativity works then how to manage the creative process and the different stages recognizing different people have different strengths and diverse teams let you put together a group of people who have all the skill sets you're going to need through the process and secondly or thirdly rather uh, the need to sell your idea to others most ideas uh, you need uh, people money resources from someone else to do it whether that's asking for you know uh, when you're a kid your parents permission to do something or whether it's putting a project through in an organization you're working or whether it's getting funding for a startup idea you have but in the end you need to take everything you've done compress it down communicate it in a way that's very clear very easy to buy that uh, predicts and deals with the objections or negatives or concerns that your audience might have and so in that first module we take you through that whole process from beginning to end and you and it feels like real life and obviously in the modules that follow then those skills are expanded and developed further but it kind of is designed to try and set you on on the course at the beginning um, um i can see Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just going to say that as somebody who wasn't involved from the beginning of this program, but who's come in as a kind of outsider, um, there's uh, two aspects, I think, of the MMA, MMK program that make it really, really special um, and that really foster that creativity. And one is that it's quite interdisciplinary. So obviously it's focused on marketing, but it does kind of range across different perspectives from kind of sociology, anthropology, cultural studies, psychology, uh, management, obviously, uh, but it is quite uh, transdisciplinary. And that's really, that's really interesting. And I think that helps foster creativity. Uh, the other thing is that it's got a very diverse student body. And in order to have creativity, you need diversity. That's what fosters creativity. Um, and also, as Marie said, there's a lot of group work. So you're really kind of collaborating with other people who have different perspectives. And that helps you come up with, with new ways of seeing things and new ideas. Um, so I think that's really at the heart of the program, and that's what makes it uh, so special. Um, another thing I just wanted to say is um, a lot of people are scared of creativity, or they think of themselves as not creative. Um, and uh, that that's really, for me, that that's complete nonsense, because everybody is creative. And if you talk to children, all children are creative. But as we grow up in school, we're kind of somehow socialized to think that we're, we aren't creative. Um, and so what the MMK tries to do is kind of, yeah, flex those creativity muscles and build them. And one of the things uh, that I think needs to be done, which is probably the hardest hurdle, hurdle in terms of uh, learning creativity, is uh, being uh, willing to kind of try out different things and therefore being willing to fail. Uh, because you can't really have creativity without failing sometimes. So um, uh, I know that for me, a lot of the assignments I set really require creativity um, in terms of kind of finding solutions to problems and alternative scenarios or realities. But um, I think what we do is we reward risk taking, right? Um, and if you fail, it's not the end of the world, as long as you're willing to kind of reflect on, you know, why it failed, why it doesn't work, and how you could kind of change things. Um, and so I think that that's really important as well in terms of thinking about creativity. Yeah, I think you're you're really uh, absolutely spot on there, uh, Chloe. And one of the things I teach in, in the uh, creative um, thinking uh, course is a notion of creative confidence, um, which is so important. Um, you know, being you know being confident about your creativity. And I think so many of us really really lack that, as you say, because of our schooling and because you know uh, typically in in most of our um, you know societies and and you know the, the the way we we grow up you're not allowed to fail and so what do you do you take the safe you know the choose the safe solution the safe um you know uh way out of of things and so you end up not 
practicing your creativity. I'll, you know, I like to give students my own, you know, example. I mean, if you told me, you know, 20 years ago that I was going to be, you know, uh, teaching classes on creativity and, you know, talking about creativity, you know, to a group of people, I would have literally, you know, just said, you know, get out of here. You have no idea what you're talking about. I'm the least creative person in the world. And I really believe that for, you know, for, for most of my life. And then along came, you know, the idea of this program, which in itself, I guess, was a creative idea. Um, and I was certainly supported, um, you know, by other people, as I said, Peter, but also some, you know, some, some more senior people at the school and so on. But, you know, I came up with the idea, I must say. And so, you know, that sort of gave me the confidence then to say, hey, you know, I can come up with, with ideas that are pretty creative. And from there, I developed my creative confidence and I started coming up with ideas that, you know, some of them failed and that was fine and others worked well. And I now call myself creative. And I think it's been a huge, you know, addition to, you know, my, you know, who I am and my, my feeling of self-worth and so on. So you can develop creative uh, creativity at any time in your life. And once you start developing it and once you start building up that confidence, um, it is a huge gift. It's a huge, um, you know, huge asset and, and something that is is um, a very, very rewarding. And so I, I'm, I'm always happy to, to share that story. I think if I could just quickly add one thing, I think one of the things we say is, you know, there's three things that we give you on this program. The first one is knowledge, and it's actually the least valuable of all the things that we can give you because knowledge is instantly out of date, particularly in marketing, particularly at the moment. So we can give you state of the art knowledge, but, you know, it's moving all the time. The second thing we can give you are skills, skills to work with that knowledge. And those skills are useful because they're transferable into the future. Some technique you use to solve a problem today will most likely apply to a problem in the future. But the third and by far we think the most valuable thing we give you is a mindset, is a way of looking at the world, looking at problems, looking, as Marie said, at how you approach things. And that's really the, the benchmark we set ourselves on the program it is to really give you that creative uh, marketing mindset. And that's what will carry you forward through whatever the world has to throw at you in, as it goes forward. And you say kind of, Peter, you mentioned about kind of creative thinking as a muscle that you need to continually work on and build. And Marie, you said as well, starting out you never thought you were a creative person so if you were um, a student who's you know going to be joining us this January what kind of advice would you give them or perhaps tips to help prepare themselves for January and to be able to get kind of those juices flowing play with Lego play with Lego <laughs> I, I was going to say curiosity yeah. you know just stay curious stay open-minded be prepared to be surprised at every moment. If you look for the surprises, you'll find them. Um, and it's almost like going around with a mental creative diary in your head and just look around you for new innovative ways that people are solving things. I, I remember going to a talk by uh, Chris Bangle, who used to be the creative director, uh, design director of BMW. And he talked about his inspirations and he just talked about being in China one time and seeing two people carrying a sort of pan of water that was too heavy for one of them to hold. And they'd sort of made a sling over their two shoulders and they were carrying it between them. And, you know, he, he just saw that and he sketched it for us. He said that was an absolute inspiration about how you can solve problems by organizing to share them uh, between other people. But, you know, from an entirely unexpected direction. Yeah, I think I think I think uh, curiosity is at the heart of it, and it's about kind of being curious, uh, being willing to question yourself. Um, you know, it's not about waiting for inspiration. So people tend to think of artists as people who just kind of hang around in an attic all day and wait for you know the muse to strike them. And I don't think that's it at all. It's actually a lot of hard work, and you have to practice. Um, and you have to kind of keep doing it. And a lot of it fails and some of it works. So it's really about practicing perspective shifting. So, you know, try and answer a problem by thinking like somebody else. You know, the most creative figures are those who come up with uh, new perspectives. And the more you see and the more excited you get about various subjects, you know, it's finding what really interests you. 
So reading widely, you know, watching different things, uh, you know, being inspired by whatever it is that interests you, I think is what's going to kind of lead you down that path. And I think maybe I think being curiosity. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Peter. What curiosity can also do is allow you to see um, instances of, of creativity um, that you would that are out there that you would not necessarily pick up as creative, um, uh, you know, firsthand. And and here's where I want to bring in this whole idea of consumer creativity, which our colleague Ben Voye and I, you know, developed several years ago, and and is I think absolutely fascinating. Um, I mean, Peter mentioned a little while ago this whole idea of job to be done, which those of you who are you know students or have been students know very well. It's it's sort of our one of our key concepts. So you know, customers, consumers have a job to be done, a problem to solve. Um, and what's interesting is that you when you start looking carefully at the way most of us as consumers solve these day to day problems we are incredibly creative in doing it so some of the times you know you know uh, you know we 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 find what i call market mediated solutions so let me give you an example um, at the end of the of a long day, I have to go home and make dinner um, for my family. And, you know, I haven't had time to go grocery shopping and, you know, I, I'm not sure what's in the fridge and so on. But, you know, there's a, a problem to be solved there, a, a job to be done. And what are some of the solutions to that job to be done? Well, one of them is, you know, to to order, you know, uh, uh, pizza or to call Uber Eats, you know, to, to order from Uber Eats or what have you. Another one is to open the fridge and think creatively about, you know, leftovers and how do I take, you know, a, a, you know, half a tomato and, you know, whatever else happens to be in there and create something out of there. Whatever solution I come up with, in a way, is an innovative solution to this particular problem that I have at this particular time um, in a particular context of, you know, it's very hot outside, so I don't want to have to walk to the supermarket. Um, but, you know, I feel like having something that's refreshing and so on and so forth. That particular context is unique. And finding a solution to that particular context is going to be a creative, um, you know, an act of creativity. And that, I think, is really interesting for us as marketers to notice and to and to understand and to be able to, you know, to to extract value from, which is how do consumers or more generally customers come up with solutions to their jobs to be done? And how does that inspire ideas for new products right and a lot of the you know whether it's a starbucks example we had earlier or any of the other you know examples that that you know you'll hear about if you join the program are about marketers who've opened up their eyes been curious to these solutions that consumers create for themselves interesting solutions that are extremely relevant to a given job to be done and are going to create value and kind of following on from that, obviously, a lot of the MSC marketing creativity is group work and also drawing on real life examples and real life companies. Over the years, have you seen uh, companies come and do seminars or workshops that you feel have a particularly creative mindset or have been a very, you know, prominent company or organization within creativity marketing? Peter, maybe? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think we... We work, we work each year with many different companies and um, some of the sort of highlights across the years that we've done, we, we started early on um, and a, a joint project with uh, the Paris Opera and uh, in fact, a European organization called Fedora, which is encouraging new opera and ballet works. And uh, in fact, one of the, the first and continuing director of that was actually one of our first students. Um, and that's a relationship that's continued across many, I guess, a decade, really. So that's a really interesting connection where we are actually in the arts world, the area, uh, Chloe's area, really, but uh, applying creativity. Um, equally, uh, we just this recently, um, this, this semester just closed, have done a really interesting 
uh, seminar with with Ferrari looking at advanced financial instruments, NFTs. So really understanding that, that's a very leading edge topic with a very high profile company. And I'm sure Marie could also talk about the work we do with companies like L'Oreal, which are obviously uh, where we have a very well developed and successful program. Yeah, I mean, we do we do do a lot of uh, of work with L'Oreal, and and they're um, you know very supportive of uh, our our efforts and our work in creativity marketing. As, as a matter of fact, they they sponsor uh, my research and and sponsor the Creativity Marketing Center. So we're we're very grateful to them for that. Um, and they really epitomize creativity in many ways. They they epitomize creativity in terms of you know the products that they you know put out and and the way they they um, you know. Uh, promote them um, more and more, you know, through their their digital uh, marketing efforts, really coming up with incredibly creative ways, um, you know, to to create relationships with their customers and and enter into what we call, you know, co-creation of, of, of uh, value with with customers, a lot of, you know, community uh, work and so on with their customers. Um, they're also very creative in the way they organize uh, their teams and, and in the way they manage people's careers and so on. So a lot of these aspects um, we find very, uh, very, very interesting and really, um, you know, uh, uh, nurture the, the creative thinking within the MMK class and, and within a lot of our research, as a matter of fact. Um, we, we also, um, obviously, as the program goes, we have um, literally now hundreds of alumni and uh, many of them are working with very interesting companies in senior positions. So uh, increasingly what happens uh, in each course that we run is that a number of our alumni come back, talk about their current role, their employer, you give us a project to work on. And there's nothing more motivating, I think, to see someone who's already at a fairly senior marketing level in a, in a leading global brand and say, well, this could be you in three or four years time because this person was sitting where you were three or four years ago. And I think the fact that we do connect with industry, we do follow our alumni, they do enthusiastically come back to support us, for which great thanks, uh, is a, a really direct way of seeing the benefit that the program can bring. Excellent. And then so before we move on to Q&A uh, and answer some of the questions from our audience, so if you do have questions, start putting them in the Q&A function. I wanted to ask how you see creativity being shaped in the future. Um, you know, sustainability is obviously such a big topic everywhere. At EFCP, it underlines almost everything that we do. Do you see that shaping creativity? What are your thoughts on that one? Um, I can I can come in here. Um, so basically what the world is facing right now is uh, a massive challenge, right? Um, and we're not dealing with it very well at the moment. Um, but it's clear that we do need new ways of thinking. Um, and marketing has a bit of a bad reputation in, because in, in many, for many reasons, but one of the kind of key reasons is uh, that the whole industry is based on selling people things that they don't necessarily need. Um, and so again, if we go back to the kind of what creativity is about and that idea of kind of value added and perception change, um, it's about thinking about these problems from new perspectives and finding solutions for them. Um, and we need a lot of new solutions. So creativity is kind of more significant than ever. It's also something that currently, you know, artificial intelligence is being trained to be more creative, but currently it's not doing that very well. So it's not something that can really be replaced by a computer just yet. Um, so it really is a skill, uh, you know, the skill perhaps of, of the future, I would argue. Um, and it's about kind of creating these shifts, both in terms of how kind of consumers can learn new ways of consuming, but also in terms of kind of production, how can we produce in ways that are, are much uh, more sustainable? Yeah, I think we have like the biggest challenge, which is to, to help everybody's life get you know, better and more enjoyable and more fulfilling while at the same time reducing um, the, the resources we need to do that. And that's a big challenge. Uh, I, I just wanted to add a little thought about technology because obviously advancing technology is a big shaper here and my colleagues probably will all have their own view. What I'd just like to say is a, a couple of things. 
technology and digital channels in particular have been great because they empower people's creativity. So in that sense, it's a great thing and, and individuality if you care to use it. But by the, in the same breath, technology uh, and digital platforms can also prompt herd behavior, which is the very opposite of creativity. And I think we need to understand that the, the tools that release our creativity can also be you know, the tools that sort of intimidate or tempt us not to exercise it. And so you do have to make, I think, in using technology, real choices about who you want to be, how you want to behave, and how you're going to express your individual personality. I think that's very important. Yeah, I just want to add uh, uh, one more dimension uh, to, to what Chloe and, and Peter have already, um, you know, said in answer to your question, Rachel, is, you know, one of the elements of, of um, creativity, but also of, of the course that we haven't addressed very much is, is the whole notion of analytical thinking. And most people think of analy analytical thinking as kind of the opposite or, you know, something that 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 is not, you know, uh, you know, uh, cannot be combined with with creativity. We believe very very strongly that it's actually quite the opposite, um, and that you you need you know uh, analytical thinking to complement uh, complement the work that you do the the creative work that you do and vice versa. So the two really work hand in hand, and and it's by really being able to combine the two that you can really create value. Now, if you transpose this thinking to to technology, um, and Chloe was just talking about artificial intelligence, um, you know, and artificial and the fact that artificial intelligence, obviously being sort of the epitome of analytical thinking um, is, is um, you know, still not entirely um, able to produce, you know, truly creative solutions, innovative and, and, and you know, invaluable. This is where I think there's a huge uh, opportunity for, for creative, um, you know, thinkers and, and, and people with, with strong creative skills to be able to um, extract as much value as possible from, from artificial uh, intelligence and, and understand understand it and know how they can use it, and then add that extra level of, um, of creative thinking, that extra level of curiosity, that extra level also of, I haven't talked about it yet today, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a, a notion that is very, very central to the way we think about creative um, thinking, which is empathy of understanding human beings, understanding what's in the minds of, of others. And so all of these very human and kind of messy parts of, you know, of human intelligence, I think are an incredibly strong, um, you know, complement to, to artificial intelligence. And, you know, at a time when we're all a little bit sort of pessimistic about so many things, you know, we've just come out of a major heat wave here in, in, in Europe, and you know, there's war and there's all sorts of things. Creative thinking, I think, um, is something that gives us, uh, you know, room for optimism and makes us think that, you know, humankind can find solutions. So yes, we have the wonderful, you know, innovations that, that come from science and, and, you know, analytical thinking, but we also have very unique and very human aspect of, of creativity and how the two complement each other, I think, is something that we really need to, you know, continue to, to, to explore, but also feel very good about. Mm. Definitely. And, and it's interesting you sort of say what is influencing thinking and industries. And Peter, you said, you know, yourself, you've had a very international career. I mean, how, what do you see, what is the kind of international outlook on creativity? Is a lot of creative thinking shaped so much by what happens globally? Um, obviously, since the pandemic, I feel like everything's become a lot more connected. Do you think that's had some impact on how businesses and industries think? Yeah, I, th I think it, it certainly has. It's an interesting uh, question, um, but actually with the roll on of, of kind of global solutions, uh, um, actually what is coming more to the surface, I think is the need to, to aim off for the, I mean, Marie talked to, towards the beginning about the importance of context, you know, you solving problem within the context that exists. 
and to recognize that not every part of the world, particularly at the moment, is sitting with the same context. And one of the other companies we work with is a really interesting one called Creative Culture, where actually a number of our students have gone also to do internships. And, and they work with the marketing community, with brands and with uh, communications agencies to ensure that when ideas for market, marketing ideas are developed, that they are fit for all the markets and adaptable to all the markets in which they'll have to run. We do not face a uniform world. And there's that balance between trying to find an overarching idea. The really amazing ones tend to travel really well because they're equally alien to every place they're gonna land. But nonetheless, you need to make sure it will work and that doesn't require some aiming off. Language is a tricky thing. So just the problem of translating from one, you know, a thought that you've expressed in words into another language or culture. So this is, and, and this requires great, great skills because it is, again, that balance between being creative but being analytical about the context. It has to fit the context in the, in the right way. Definitely. And, and I guess kind of following on from that, you see so much of cancel culture. That's such a huge thing at the moment and how quickly a company or an organization can be canceled if they just make one slightly wrong mistake, as you said, that's going to be interpreted differently in different areas of the world or different contexts. So I guess that's potentially another struggle that um, mm. creative marketers are facing. Um, perfect. So we have a couple of questions in our Q&A. Um, one is it's actually for Marie, but it's. Um, maybe quite not necessarily on the creativity question, but more about MMK itself, um, about how the MMK kind of has a uh, scope for a student who wants to go on to do a doctoral degree or a research project in the near future within creative marketing ecosystem. Yeah, um, interesting question. I, you know, I, I, I want to be very, very honest here. Um, I do not believe that the MMK is a natural stepping stone into a doctoral degree. Um, I mean, two things I want to say. The first one is we are a very um, practice oriented program. Um, and, you know, our, our ambition, our, our mission is to train marketers um, who are going to go out there and become marketing leaders. So that's the first thing. And then the other thing I would say more generally, and Chloe can agree or disagree with me, is I, I think you need to think about a PhD after you've done a master's degree. Don't think, okay, I want to do a PhD. What master's degree should I do? Go get a, a master's degree in whatever you know, suits your fancy, whatever you know, you're interested in. Go do some work, um, I think, is also important, both Chloe and I have PhDs, but we've both had um, significant, um, uh, you know, professional experience and that really informs our teaching a lot and then come back to a PhD. So um, I'm sorry. I mean, we'd love to, to have you as a student, whoever asked the question, but if you're really after a PhD, um, I don't think the MMK is the right program for you. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd have to kind of agree with Marie and just say that um, I've seen I've seen a lot of PhD students who uh, have gone straight from a kind of undergraduate to a master's to a PhD, and they tend to be to be absolutely honest weaker researchers because they don't know how things work uh, in in the kind of real world in practice, and uh, then they can think very theoretically, uh, but then in terms of actually applying that, there, there's a problem there. So I would say the best thing to do is do a master's in yeah, whatever interests you, uh, spend some time working and in, in spend some years working in whatever industry uh, you wanna work in. That could be freelance, it could be across various uh, projects. And then if you're still interested in research and you wanna follow that up, by all means, kind of find a PhD program that you think will work for you um, and then uh, do some research. And it'll also be much easier to do research once you know something well, because a PhD is extremely focused. Uh, so you're looking at something which is very, very uh, niche in terms of, uh, again, you have to kind of add value to that area. So you need to know it really well. And that's much easier once you've actually worked uh, usually in that area. Thank you. And then there's another one um, that's more kind of on the career focus. So do you think the MSc in marketing creativity is for someone who is interested in innovation and creative thinking, but not necessarily in marketing roles, perhaps somebody who is more interested in innovation strategy? I mean, I think um, 
actually not, you know, only a proportion of our alumni go into pure marketing roles. They go into many other roles. And I say our view of marketing anyway is really about understanding consumer behavior and responding to it. And that you can apply in, in to many different fields, including innovation strategy. So, um, you know, the, the marketing tag obviously places our program in a field, but we, as you may have picked up, have as diverse a view as it's possible to have about how you might apply those skills to, to different careers. Maria, I, I don't know if you want to pick up on that one and, and some of our kind of alumni. You know, I totally, totally taken. agree. Um, you know, Chloe defined um, marketing earlier as, you know, understanding value creation and, and, and value creation, actually. And, and so to the extent that that's what we as marketers do, um, you know, uh, uh, learning to be a good marketer can, you know, set you up for any sort of entrepreneurial uh, career or career in, you know, product innovation or anything like that. Um, so I think there's you know, and and we have loads and loads and loads of examples of our alumni from the MMK who've gone on to um, start, um, you know, to 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 launch startups or to you know go into product development. Many, 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 either right after the program sometimes even during the program, sometimes before the program, um, and then later on in their career. So the two are very, very much uh, interlinked. And again, we have a, a slightly, um, you know, certainly a, 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 a view of marketing as being something that is you know, much larger than most people think, much broader than most people think. I mean, we think of marketing at the end of the day as, as you know, strategy. I'm, we sometimes have interesting discussions with some of our um, colleagues in the strategy department. We are uh, very, uh, very clear about the fact that we, we are at the core of what strategy is about. Yeah, and I'd argue we're all marketers, whether we're working in marketing or not, because you're selling an idea to somebody somehow. So we all need these skills. And, and that's why it, it's kind of good to look at marketing in the kind of broadest pers uh, perspective possible. Absolutely right. I mean, I, I teach a, a module to senior executives, uh, financial controllers from a big telecoms company. And that's all about how do they market their recommendations to the CEO when they've come from a very technical finance background. And then they have to understand their audience wants to get it really clear without all the technicalities. And that's marketing. That's marketing your idea to the person who needs to approve it. So we have time, I think, for just one more before I wrap up. I thought it's quite a nice question to end on. Um, what's the most creative solution you've ever heard from one of your students or a group of students in your class? I want to put you on the spot um, there. But. Um, I, I, let me give a quick example and then uh, others will have others. But this was actually uh, in... Um, in one of the creative consultancy projects that we that we do for clients, and and the company was a company that gave um, advisory, basically kind of project software, but very visual that could be used by companies, and they just wanted uh, aimed at B two B audiences, business audiences, and they wanted the team to come up with, uh, you know, how should they market it to be to business audiences, and the team went away, and one person in particular, and when they came back, you know, two months later. They said, no, you don't want to be marketing this to business audiences. You haven't, there's not, it's not unique enough, but look, you could sell this to consumer audiences like this. Oh, and by the way, here's the brand name and here's the logo. And here, by the way, is the first design for the website. And it was just out of the blue because it wasn't what the client had asked for. The clients were delighted and they hired that person to be their marketing lead and they put all those all those recommendations into practice. And that for me is super creative because they really had to drill back into the brief and understand they'd been given a brief that wasn't very workable, but they could really see their way to something better. And then as I was saying earlier, they were able to demonstrate it, to sell it in. And that's the, that's one of the key moments, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I must say there's so many examples of some amazingly creative, um, you know, proposals and recommendations that I've seen over the years from our students that I can't single one out. But I would say that, you know, by and large, people who really take that, you know, that that perspective of, okay, I have a brief, I'm going to stay within the brief, but I'm going to 
really question every single premise of what this brief is about and really rethink it. That's important. Important. And then the other thing that I love and which I think is is always you know just such a, a strong point on the MMK is the way um, teams will present their work, whether it's in class, you know, at, as a, a you know a project at the end of a module or in a company project or a creative seminar. Um, you know, we have students who put so much effort and thinking into how they pre present their idea. We have people who act out, you know, their, their solution, uh, who do videos. I know that Chloe loves to have uh, students um, develop um, little, you know, TikTok, um, you know, ads and, and messages and so on. So that's where I think the, you know, the, the MMK has really always managed to surprise me is, is with, you know, this whole range. Again, Again, every aspect of what they do is creative. Um, Chloe, pick it up on the, on the TikTok. Yeah. That's such a uh, great assignment. Yeah, no one of the one of the assignments for my creative branding course is uh, uh, in groups to kind of create a, a TikTok challenge. Uh, so you choose a company and you come up with a, a TikTok challenge uh, that is relevant for whichever target market uh, you're going for. And that's a really kind of fun way to actually kind of uh, practice some of the skills. Um, and uh, what's great about that is I get a huge diversity in terms of the types of brands that are used and the types of target markets they're um, they're catering to. So so it's really it's really interesting. Uh, but I think in terms of kind of um, creativity, what I'm looking for is just kind of being a, able to apply some of the theories we discuss in class and just applying them in new ways. Um, and applying them in new contexts. And that's what shows me real creativity. So for example, uh, when I've taught the branding, I often ask students um, to come up uh, with um, a new kind of uh, branding strategy for, for a company. And I've seen students, for example, use um, ideas like celebrity branding or person branding, because branding is kind of ever more being used uh, in areas, not just for products, but for all sorts of things, including ourselves. And I've seen students kind of brand themselves, for example, uh, as a project uh, for the marketplace. And, and that's really interesting. And then they can kind of criti critically reflect on what are the problems with that? Are they just a product or not? Uh, and I've seen some really kind of creative work there in terms of kind of CVs, for example, writing a new CV, uh, which uh, communicates what they want to communicate to uh, the people they want to hire them. So some really kind of creative work there. So with, with my other hat on as head of the career service, I'm really delighted you're doing that because in the end, that's one of the key, uh, you know, ob objectives of the course is that you can project yourself as a highly marketable brand of creative marketeer or cre creative person at the end of the course. Um, and, you know, the success, the employment record of uh, the graduates of this program shows that um, by and large, um, we're getting it right. Definitely. So thank you. That was a nice one um, to end on. But we'll have to leave the discussion here because we're just over the hour. Um, so thank you to those who asked questions. If there are any questions that weren't answered, do send me an email. Um, my email is on the website. You can find all my details so I can help you with any of those. Um, but I hope you found the discussion very useful and very insightful. And for those of you joining us in January, I hope it's kind of sparked more excitement for you and got those creative thinking juices flowing and ready for you to start the MMK. Um, so thank you very much to my panel for joining us today. It's always lovely to hear from you. Um, and then finally, thank you to everyone who's joined us as well and has watched. Um, as I said, any further information you want, do reach out. Um, but thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.